All right, we're on to fixing the epoxy on the uh, connector there. So we've been running for oh, an hour or so anyway, and we're down to 366 millitors. So that's a good vacuum. So it's still dropping. It'll go a little bit more, but I think we got good enough vacuum for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this tape and I'm going to wrap this around this part right here on these wires. So I'm going to wrap it around back and, and then leave a little bit there. Then I'm going to mix up some epoxy. I've got some uh, um, Loctite clear, uh, clear epoxy. And then I'll put some of that on there. I'm going to do just the wires and then we'll let it vacuum and see what it does. And if that fixes it, then I know that's where the leak was. If that doesn't fix it, then we'll come down and work on this. So uh, let me pause this, and I'll create my little dam to hold the epoxy in there. And then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, I wrapped the blue tape around here. So now it, it's sealed down there really good. So what I'll do is I'll start putting this inside of here once I get it mixed up. And then I'll probably use a, um, a little stick or something to, plastic spoon or something to, to scoop it in and then get it in there and and then uh, probably some toothpicks going to poke in there and, and make sure it gets sealed around all that really good and then I don't know if you can see where else but they put shrink wrap on here and when I was talking to the technician you know about replacing these wires these two wires are power wires and these go to the sensor so uh, what he's saying it doesn't matter shouldn't matter which way these are get so you could switch these on the on the on this unit over here or switch the the big ones but you can't intermix you know like like the one of the larger ones and the smaller ones uh, because they're they're different functions so if you do go through and have to do this replacing then just remember where they come from because they're not identified which is which so it shouldn't make any difference so let me get the epoxy mixed up and then we'll put that in there and we'll see what it does then. Okay, I have some epoxy mixed up here. Um, I just put on some tape here. So what I'm going to do is I'll go around here and start putting this inside of here. Just kind of keep putting it in there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, come, I'll finish that because it's a little hard to hold the camera and do it at the same time. So let me pause the camera and uh, we'll come back once I get it filled in. All right, we have it wrapped in here, and you can see I have a, quite a bit of it around here. I put a, uh, a tape on here to make sure it doesn't go in. I'm gonna, there's a five minute uh, open time, 20 minute set time. So what I noticed is it kind of rolled down in there. So I'm gonna kind of squish this around in here to hold that in in place. And now then I'll probably put some more tape on around it uh, to help hold it in place so I, I get a good good seal on there. So I'll do that. After I put the first batch on, there wasn't much in there, and I, I pulled it off when it was just a little bit sticky, and it didn't seal it in right. So I put another wrap around here, and as you can see in the back, it's clear up to here, but it's not quite. I'll pull this back a little bit. You can see it's it's got it sealed around there, but it's not completely flush. So what I may do is let that go ahead and set up a little bit more because as it's liquid, it kind of flows. So what I'll do is I'll let that set up just a little bit. And then I'll put a little bit more in there so it's a nice good seal around there. So that's kind of where we're at on that one. We're still going to run this uh, till uh, uh, tomorrow morning and then we'll we'll see what it's doing. This should have a chance to get completely set up. And then we'll, uh, we'll see if we still have a leak. If you do still have a leak, then I'll go ahead and epoxy around that other part of it. All right, after that first initial putting epoxy on, it wasn't filling it enough, so I put the tape on there again, fill it up even more. So now you can see we have a good seal all the way around all these wires around here. So that should seal it. If that is the problem, that should fix it. If not, we'll go down here and we'll seal the whole thing in. But if we take a look, we just had the power go out, so it shut it off and it lost vacuum, and I turned it on. And we've been running seven minutes. We're already below 500. So that's definitely a better sign than we had before. That's quicker than any other time it went down that far. So I, we may have it. But we'll, time will tell. So we'll wait for tomorrow. And then we'll we'll do some testing once it's 
it's not sticky anymore. The epoxy has completely cured before we can really test it anymore. Well, after the epoxy fix on those wires, it's been running about 12 hours, and you notice we're down to 192 millitors, and it's it's dropping still, because I, I, a few minutes ago it was like 199. So it's down to 192. I'm gonna let it run till uh, tomorrow morning, make sure that epoxy is completely cured. And then while it's under vacuum, we're going to spray it and see if it goes up. If it still goes up, then I have one more thing to fix. Uh, we'll, we'll try it out. See, now it's down to 291. So I'm not sure where it's going to go, but we'll find out in the morning. Have a close-up look at the epoxy fix. I guess I put the first coat on, and it didn't really fill it all in very well. So I took it off, although the tape was, it was still a little sticky. I put on some more, and I filled it in a little bit more. And then... Then I did it again, and now then it was kind of sloping down to just right about here. So I did it again, and now I have a good thick ceiling all the way around here. And it's it's hard. It's been uh, 24 hours. So let's come around and see what our pressure is. We've been running about 24 hours. We're down to 171 millitor. So that is actually better than... It, it's ever been before you know it'd get down to around the five four hundred sometimes under the test it get down to about three hundred so i got this morning it was two one 172 and now it's down to 171 so it's still kind of dropping slightly so that may have fixed all the problem i don't know so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to spray it around both places both the epoxy fix as well as the sensor and everything else so Hold on, let me uh, get spraying on that. It's all right around here? Yeah, we're going to start spraying around the epoxy fix. So we're going to spray a bunch on there and see if it goes up. So now we're at 171. We're just going to keep spraying, see what it does around there. And it takes, takes a little bit sometimes for it to start going. Okay, keep, keep spraying. I'm spraying. Bit. Okay, okay, I can't get spraying. All right, move over to the sensor connection. Start spraying there, because remember the the place we put the epoxy wasn't leaking; it was leaking around the sensor. And then when we got the sensor tight, then it started leaking around where you put the epoxy. So now we're spraying around the sensor to see if maybe it started leaking because we're building up more pressure because we got quite a bit of that's a lot of pressure that this is under right now and well it moved up to 172 let's see if it moves up anymore sometimes it takes a little while I don't see it moving one number probably up oh, now it's going up to three back down to two so it's bouncing around there i i may just uh, uh go ahead and because i hate to tighten it any tighter because it's getting pretty tight i might just go ahead and put a little bit of a just a thin coating epoxy around there and 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 see what that does so we'll do that um not going up anymore so it's gone up two millitors since we started spraying and it's kind of sitting right there so there might be just a slight leak on there I think I'm gonna run it go ahead and try running a batch and see what that does see if that fixed it we're starting the third test batch after we've been fixing stuff on here so once we get down uh, 15 minutes then we'll be able to load the trays in right now they're in our freezer and uh, so they should be nice and froze. They're all froze. So we'll start with the tomatoes that were froze and then the, the whole carrots. And we'll put those back in and we'll see what the uh, uh, cycle does. If it completes the cycle, then we know we're all done. So it's been a journey, but uh, we're, we're figuring it out. We have our test batch in. 
This is the third time we've run a test batch to see if we got it fixed. So we got uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, and tomato juice, and then we got our carrots on top. So we're going to run this again, and we're going to see. It's going to take a little while, so we'll, we'll figure out if that, that helped or not. But we got it started, and let me see, we've just, we've just got it started. So we'll come back uh, when either we get through the freezing section, and then we'll kind of update there, and then we get through done. Or, or we may just come back once it's all done, depending on, on how it's looking. But uh, stay tuned. We'll see if this actually fixed the Harvest Right Vacuum Error number 9.